such a great group today. <laughs> Decoy carving, a quintessential American art form. Native Americans were creating hunting decoys centuries before the white man showed up. Today, decoy carving's a big business. Hunters use them to attract birds. Collectors can fetch thousands of dollars for some of the more unique pieces. Yeah, and we've all heard of the Ward Brothers. Their legacy was the inspiration behind the Ward Museum of Wildfowl Art. But there are other carvers who are creating quite a legacy for themselves, one of which is Ro Terry of Shinkatig. His creations are some of the most sought after in the area, but he's not keeping up with the demand, and that's okay. I recently visited his workshop to find out why. For more than a century, Ro Terry of Shinkatig has been carving duck decoys, something he started when he was a little boy. I live next door to a gentleman named Doug Jester. Uh, he was Doug Jester Jr., uh, the son of one of the most famous decoy carvers Shinkatig ever had. Rose says he watched his neighbor craft decoys for years before he finally got his chance to try. When I was 15, he uh, brought me a little piece of white pine door, door sill, door frame and cut me out some little miniatures, miniature Canada geese, made three of them. He said, uh, go home and make these. That was my introduction. That was my, my lesson. And that's all it took. Roe was hooked. In fact, it wasn't long before he started selling them in a local restaurant for $2 a piece. All these other kids were cutting grass for 4 or $5 a week. I said, you know, this ain't a bad deal. Roe continued to carve even when he enlisted in the Navy. He also began entering competitions. So give me a, a little message, just for showing up. And I, next year I did the third place, and the following year I did the second place, and next thing you knew I had a hundred blue ribbons hanging on the wall. And then I figured, you know what, it's time to start collecting the right color ribbons, the green ones. In other words, it was time to make some money, and he did but it took a leap of faith to quit his full-time job to turn his hobby into a career. And I looked at the wife, I said, I want to quit my job. Civil service, I had wife, two kids, brand new house. She said, what are you gonna do? I said, I want to carve ducks for them. That's what I want to do, that's my passion. Rowe's wife wasn't sold on the idea, but he did it anyway. He says the first week of carving, he made more money than he did at his previous job. And I wrote down every duck I did for the next nine and a half years. Every shorebird, every swan, every duck, I made 5,751 pieces. But those nine and a half years wore row down. My shoulders were wore out, my hands were wore out, I was tired, my back hurt. I had, uh, I had built up a heck of a good business in nine and a half years. I was real fortunate, but uh, when you put the knife down, your paycheck stops. Roe returned to his formal full-time job and spent nearly 20 years there before retiring for good. But he never stopped carving, and he still does, but on his own terms. I've made so many shorebirds and uh, you know, ducks, geese, and swans and shorebirds. I can make a good living if I wanted to doing that right now uh, without my retirement. But I don't want to. I've always wanted to be the next Cigar Daily. I just, Cigar was my idol, the old trapper and waterman and duck carver and when you go there he had that hatchet just to fly in and I wanted to be like him. I wanted people to come in my shop and they, I wanted them to want my work in decoys like they wanted his. In fact, Rose says it takes about a day and a half to create a bird using a workflow he adopted from his mentor, Cigar Daisy. He said, boy, go in the morning and chop your bird out, make the head, sand them, get them ready, hollow them out, prime it and have it ready to paint after supper. Eat your dinner, Go in the paint room and start painting on it. Get up the next morning, finish that bird, start another one. So a day and a quarter, day and a half, but you always had a bird going all the time. Just like Roe turned to his mentors to become a master in his trade, he has young carters coming up behind him, like 26-year-old Zach Juster. Uh, he's doing fantastic work now. He can make, he's got so much energy, he'll make a shorebird one day, he'll make a decoy the next day, he'll make a songbird the next day. The boy's got the talent uh, to go places. Uh, just hope he sticks with it. As for Roe, he's planning on sticking with his carving for as long as he can. I'm 63 now, and I keep telling people that if I can make it till I'm about 70, but I want to get about 300 of my decoys on these shelves before I quit. So I want to have them sitting there. If I want to sell a few and go to Florida or a hunting trip, I'll have them. But I see myself 
I see myself slowing down. I just can't bring myself to do it right now. I don't see him slowing down anytime soon either. Well, in addition to carving ducks, Rotary is also a saltwater cowboy and longtime member of the Chincoteague Volunteer Fire Company. In fact, Jimmy, when we go down there for the uh, the Chincoteague Pony Swim, right, he yeah. is our point man. Is that right? He always gets us out on the boats for that, so we appreciate that wow. from him. Thank you for doing that. That was fascinating. Okay. It was fascinating. Some, and, and duck carving really is pretty competitive, isn't it? It is. Whew. Very competitive.